This video addresses the basics of folding corrugated plastic. Corrugated plastic is strongest when it remains in one piece. It can't be joined at right angles as effectively as a material like wood. It's probably helpful to think of it as more similar to building with cardboard than with wood. Folding will be a part of most corrugated plastic projects. To successfully fold corrugated plastic, it helps a lot to effectively prepare the plastic to be folded. There are a number of ways to do this. In this video, I'll show you some of the best ways to fold corrugated plastic using tools that are more or less commonly available. I'll also discuss tools that you're less likely to have and may find more challenging to acquire, but which may be even more effective. The easiest fold starts with a cut. Paul Elkins calls this a hinge cut. That works for me. By extension, we can also call this a hinge fold. Because this fold involves cutting, please review my video on the basics of cutting corrugated plastic. That video includes more detailed information on cutting than I'll repeat in this video. I will, however, repeat my warning about knife safety. This video does not address knife safety. A review of safe practices is recommended, or if you've never worked with knives before, a training course in knife safety. I found what I could on YouTube and made a playlist, but this should not be your only resource. A hinge fold involves cutting through one outer layer of corrugated plastic. If you're cutting across the inner walls, you'll cut partway through those walls as well. The remaining outer wall is very strong, but obviously this reduces the overall strength of the corrugated plastic. Set your knife blade short, making sure that it isn't long enough to cut through the second outer wall. You can run the blade holder along a straight edge to help ensure that you only cut so deep. Of course, the straight edge helps you achieve a straight, clean cut as well. My blade could be even shorter than shown here. It isn't necessary to cut all the way through the inner walls. They'll tear back the rest of the way when you fold the plastic. Keep in mind that the plastic I'm cutting here is half a centimeter in thickness. That's a little under a quarter inch. Also keep in mind that the depth of the blade is reduced by the thickness of the straight edge. Cutting between flutes is easy. Cutting close to an inner wall can cause issues, however, so be aware of that. If your blade crosses the inner wall, it will be prone to changing course, which can affect the straightness of your cut. It can also affect the appearance of the resulting fold. Be aware and be careful. If possible, move the cut just a bit further from that inner wall. Cutting across the inner walls is a bit harder. As always, go slow, focus on controlling the blade, and don't worry if you need to make two or more passes, even just to get through that top layer. Try not to be too tense and tight, as that can hurt more than help. I'm finding that holding the straight edge with one knee and one hand helps hold it securely. Be careful when folding as well. Take your time and be aware of what is happening to the plastic. Don't let it fold in the wrong place. This isn't hard, but it will pay to take your time and take care. All of this is easier with thinner plastic, but it all still applies. The hinge fold is useful for a lot of corrugated plastic projects. I haven't used it often enough. A lot of my projects would have been made easier and probably improved in appearance as well through the use of hinge folds. Hinge folds won't be appropriate for every project, however. If you're building a kayak, for example, you don't want to let water enter the flutes in every fold. A hinge cut also reduces the strength of the corrugated plastic, another reason not to use it on something like a kayak. 
When you need to fold corrugated plastic without cutting halfway through it, you'll want to create a crease in the plastic. Basically, an indentation that helps the plastic to fold where you want it to. A pizza cutter is a tool that is readily available that does the job easily and pretty effectively. A straight edge can be used to make the crease as straight as possible. This is very effective for thinner corrugated plastic. The plastic shown here is three millimeters thick. It also works well for creating a crease between the inner walls of thicker plastic. When working across the inner walls of five millimeter thick corrugated plastic, the pizza cutter did a good enough job of creating a crease, but I needed something to help with the folding to help ensure that the plastic folded in the right place. This pizza cutter is a bit flimsy for the kind of pressure I'm applying. I imagine there are sturdier pizza cutters available, and I'll be on the lookout for one. I was concerned that it might be sharp enough to cut through the plastic, but it doesn't appear that will be an issue. I'm not aware of a similar tool that might work better. There is the option of making a custom tool for this purpose. I actually use scissors to cut my pizza. If you're new to corrugated plastic and you don't have a pizza cutter, there are other ways to create folds. My first project was completed using a small table. I didn't create any kind of crease before starting to fold. A piece of wood could be used for this. The right piece of wood could possibly be used to create a crease before beginning to fold. I used a chisel with a very wide blade for quite a while. As you saw, this chisel still comes in handy for completing folds started with a pizza cutter across the inner walls on thicker corrugated plastic. My approach here is to create a crease by applying pressure with the chisel. If my fold crosses the inner walls, I break down those inner walls. In a second pass, I carefully fold the plastic part way, making sure the fold happens only where I want it to. Then, with the plastic thus prepared, it can finally be folded. The tool I haven't found yet is a strip heater. Such a tool would apply heat in a very specific place on the corrugated plastic, making it soft along just a thin strip and easy to fold at that spot. I found videos showing the use of similar tools for acrylic. I believe a heat strip exists that I can just lay on top of a sheet of plastic, but I haven't found that tool yet. The quest continues. As always, if you have any tips, please let me know. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and click the bell to be sure you're notified of my next video.